All right. When last we left off, we were trying to get to the Atlas station, which we made it to the... Oh, you know what I forgot to do, though? Hang on. I gotta turn around. Forgot to hit the uh, exosuit. Pretty sure I did not do my exosuit at the end of last night's session, because I was... Or yesterday's session, because I was really tired. I think we got here and then I wrapped it up. <sighs> Today's gonna be a shorter stream. I'm not gonna do like a three or four hour today. I'm gonna do a two hour because I do need to get to some uh, enshrouded today. I got a full docket. I am going to keep filling up these first three rows. Just to finish this out. Alright, we need to do the anomaly. Anyway, I say that now. I may feel good after two hours. I may keep going. But I, d I do... I have to stream World of Warcraft tonight. We have guild stuff. And then I've got... A bunch of other stuff that I have to do this afternoon to prep for tomorrow. But I do got to get some uh, enshrouded time in today and tomorrow. So more than likely, tomorrow's stream will not be a No Man's Sky stream. Tomorrow's stream will more than likely be an enshrouded stream. Because I do need to log some hours to check out Update 3. Uh, I have not played... I did not play Update 2. I played Update 1. Because we were still playing multiplayer. So the, all the dungeons went live. We did the dungeons. Finished the dungeons. And then I went off to do other stuff. Um, and then I did not come back for update 2. Update 3 looks really, really cool. So I'm going to take a look at... First and foremost, uh, I want to take a look at the mage changes. Because the mage was one of the classes I didn't like the first time around. Because the controls didn't feel good enough. And now they've done changes to the mage. Specifically, this patch, update 3, had a ton of new things done with the mage wands and stabs. And the way that the mage spells work in general. So I'd like to try that out. Because I have a sword and board character... Um, who was my primary tank for the multiplayer group. Anyway, uh, tomorrow, definitely be doing some Enshrouded. So, if you're tuning in only for the No Man's Sky streams, uh, we'll be back probably Monday or Tuesday with more No Man's Sky, but I do need to take at least one day away. Um, and if I get everything I need, I could do it in one day, in one session. So, we'll see how tomorrow goes. But tomorrow's stream, for sure, will be um, Enshrouded, not No Man's Sky. And I'll remind people as we go throughout the stream, because people will forget, people will tune in later, won't know. I've had some more time to sit on... story that I came across yesterday in this game. I have I, I'm I have various predictions in my mind now about where we're going with the story of No Man's Sky. I, I had I, I had another wild random thought and, and no one needs to spoil it. It's all good. We'll get there eventually. But now I'm also wondering how much of this is, is going to be because we've seen so much robotic stuff at play. I've suspected some AI elements are behind what's going on. There's been like some matrixy style stuff. I've got theories. Once I find out more, I'm going to talk about what I thought was going to happen versus what actually happens. Because I guarantee I won't get it all right. What's up, Programmist? What's up, Commander Wolf? All right. Let's do this right here. Shagrath says, Greetings, while you try the new Lotro servers with the 64-bit architecture, I just played on the new Mordor server, and it's great. Also, some of the new mechanics will ring my server enemy. No, I'm not. Um, at least there's no plan for me to do so at the moment. I have not touched Star Wars Yield Republic or Lord of the Rings Online this year. 
I may come back probably in the spring. I'll probably swing back around and check out both Lord of the Rings Online and Star Wars Republic, see what they're up to. Uh, but not at the moment. I've got a jam-packed schedule. Although I do need to do a news piece about Lotro. I kind of forgot about that. I need to... Uh... Holy crap, I didn't even think about the Red Bandit. That's pretty obnoxious on stream, isn't it? Oh well. I got a bug bite. I keep scratching at it inadvertently, so I put a band-aid on it. Okay, I think we've done both of these. Now we gotta go find that giant arc structure that was here when we first jumped in. Um, I'm probably too close to this to see anything. Let's get away. I should just track it in my journal. Or was it? It was a giant pyramid looking pyramid looking thing. Yep, oh, there it is right there. Yeah, don't shoot at it, you idiot. This is what we were working on yesterday was traveling here. Music just got all creepy. Hang on, what are these like there's triangles over there with like stuff going on. I learned the Atlas word for traveler. Can I learn other words that like those things? Is this like all platform? Oh wow. I didn't realize I could do this. This I thought this I would fall. That one didn't teach me anything. Nor did that one. Okay, maybe they're just decorative? The first one definitely taught me a word. I remember these two things were lootable the first time I came in here. Yeah, with warp cells. They're preparing me for the next journey. Commander Wolf says some of them do though. Oh, so I should grab all of them. Do I need to worry about those pyramids? Those pyramids also have like a glowy VFX. Yeah, only, okay, that one totally had a word for me. I'll be damned. Fury says, hey, Renfro, love your No Man's Sky videos over on YouTube. Thanks for that. Geek, thanks for tuning in this morning to the multi-stream over on Twitch. Tim Tempe 2 says, hey, Renfro, I was watching yesterday's video. I love what you were saying about how people misinterpret how games are talked about from the developers. Yeah. Um, that was a fun one. Um, we, um, you know, I think that can be, I, I, I can, probably apply that to every game that comes out. P 
people you'll find a certain subset of the community who will misinterpret things but it's been particularly bad around certain games um like you know what we were talking about in that video um in some cases there might be justification for it like there's nothing wrong with criticizing how a game does something but the there seems to be a conversion point where the criticism turns from being legitimate criticism to just vitriol and that's um it's really easy to get We've had this discussion in other videos, but it's really easy to get. If I wanted to get like a video with 500,000 views tomorrow, all I would have to do is make a rage bait video. Um, as soon as you start, it's like a train wreck effect, you know. As soon as you start yelling about something, I saw a video this morning that says, um, "This is literally what the video said." the 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 title showed, the thumbnail showed, the chick from Stellaris. Um, I forget the the name of that act that character Ava maybe Ava Ava I don't remember the the, act, the character from still um not Stellaris God damn it I'm gonna blank on it now it just came out it was one of those games where it was all about the female avatar and now I'm blanking the name it's not Stellaris Stellaris is the other uh, space sim the management game Stellar Blade that's why I said not to say it. it's Stellar Blade I said St Stellaris in my mente Stellar Blade which had the female avatar with the big boobs and the big ass, right? So somebody had taken that avatar, slapped it on a thumbnail, slapped the face of the uh, character K-Vess from uh, Star Wars Outlaws, and then the thumbnail said they stole her ass, and then the title says, Woke Star Wars Creative Director blasts this company or other like like literally the whole focus of that was you know accusing the game director of star wars outlaws of being woke while using a thumbnail of like the stellar flight character with a mashup of of k vest and just basically we're gonna make a rage bait video about hating star wars outlaws and how it's woke and all this other stuff and then i think that video had already racked up within like 15 minutes had racked up 150,000 views and i just looked at that and shook my head and went god i mean youtube bunny if you can if you can get that kind of youtube bunny it, it must be an irresistible urge <laughs> just to make rage bait content uh low hanging fruit for sure stellaris is a good game i had a lot of fun with it i only played it for a short window of time but it was it was interesting yeah how is more star wars bad it's not it's people man yeah i can't wait for it either i've seen nothing but amazing things from star wars outlaws i actually just i haven't i haven't made my video about this i just pre-ordered the ultimate edition yesterday for the ps5 so uh, i will be playing star wars outlaws a little bit early um I'm not a big enough streamer or content creator to get tons of free games. So, like, all the people who got to play, like, the four-hour demo last week, I mean, little... I mean, it's something to look forward to as you grow as a content creator. Um, I've avoided all of those. I've read the reviews, but I've, avoid, I've avoided all the people who showed off a bunch of the footage because I don't want it spoiled. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's always nice to get a little bit of a head start. So even if it's only three days for me, if that's what I can get at this point, that's all, you know, I'll take it. Um, cause it does give you a few days of extra. Usually what happens is I'll get an extra 30 to 50 people tuning into the streams for the days that I have the head start. And then it goes to like normal levels. Once we're at the point where everyone's launched and everyone's playing the game. And then some of those people convert into long-term viewers. So that's, that's the long-term goal of everything. You pre-ordered the special edition from GameStop. Nice. I treat it like the same thing I did with um, Starfield. I bought the premium edition of uh, Starfield. Pre-ordered that. The art book was badass. I covered that in a video. I've done two playthroughs of Starfield. Definitely made more than that back. Um... And I already get Shattered Space, which is coming up this fall, because I pre-ordered that. And it's, so I look at it the same way. It's like Star Wars Outlaws. I'm going to get the art book, the game. I get two narrative DLCs and some cosmetics. And a few days early access. It's going to be good. 
I think it looks really cool, Commander. I'm really looking forward to the old uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 in space thing they've got going on. Ooh, this one's speaking another language. It's called the Mobile Convergence. The Atlas called me to this interface, and yet its purpose remains unclear. It demands worship, obedience, but welcomes me. It knows what I am. It offers the gift of true understanding. But why does such power and knowledge crave submission? It knows my thoughts before I know them myself. It knows what I will do. The Atlas asks me. Whoa, what is it? It says, accept milestone pathfinder or above. So I guess if I hadn't already traveled enough, I wouldn't be able to accept it at this point, but I can. The sky is deep and full of wonders, and the path to enlightenment opens to me. I just got a captured nanoid. It's an atlas seed containing zonally shifting quasi-stellar substrate. Warning, do not allow the matrix to commune with this dimensional space. Wait, did I just get a set of health something? I don't know what that said. Um... called out for seeds, and I feel strangely compelled to obey. The foreboding crimson geometry of an atlas station houses an interface with creation itself. While in space... So I need to locate the next atlas station to know more? Alright. I'm, I'm intrigued by this story, so we're gonna... Assuming I can go to the next level, we're gonna do this today. That's what we're gonna work on this morning. Yeah, that's what it came included when Tim was the um, the season pass with the. I think maybe the expanded edition comes with that too. There's like three different editions, right? Shame avowed is delayed till February, says Biffle. Yeah, I did a news article on that uh, right before I went live this morning. Um, I don't mind. I'm actually a little relieved because it gives me. I was starting to. I was really stressed about Dragon Age Veilguard and avowed coming out within the same window. And now that's not happening, so I'm like, oh, take your time, Obsidian. Don't rush it. Uh, you've now confirmed that I can at least give Dragon Age the Veil Guard the, like, if it's a... I'll tell you what, if, if I get good traffic on that game, which I'm hoping I do, um, if I get Baldur's Gate 3 level of traffic um, and etc., um, and, and the game is like a 40 or 50 hour game, uh, Dragon Age the Veil Guard, we're going to do two back-to-back. Because I could easily fit two back-to-back -back playthroughs in during a month if uh, if it's that level of engagement from the community. Um, it all depends, you know. I always just look at that and say, is it worth a second playthrough right away or not? Um, but I have high hopes for Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. It's going to be fun, regardless of what the turnout is. I'm going to have fun playing it. Um, so now it doesn't compete with Avowed, and I'm happy because I wanted to play Avowed. I, Avowed is also equally in that headspace. I, I absolutely... I actually like from a story perspective, I like the Pillars of Eternity world more than the Dragon Age world. Um, but Dragon Age has been such a fun franchise to evolve with over the years. It's had more time in the kitchen if that makes sense to like season and everything. I had a lot of good memories in both series though. Um, great franchises. Yes, these are the Atlas quests. And it's been... Yesterday, it sucked me in, so assuming... And what was nice about yesterday is, like, proceeding along the path to try to find more Atlas stations. Um, I've been finding undiscovered planets, which is great, because I'm kind of keeping an eye out for, like, a paradise planet that I could stick a base on and start building my actual base out. It's not a high priority, but it's something that's in the back of my mind. Yeah, Ver Varric looks awesome as an older character. I love the the, the long-haired look they gave Varric this time around. You know, he's a middle-aged dwarf now, you know. He's he's seen some shit. <laughs> oh, I love the character reveals. That's another game where people were giving un unjustified hate. It was Dragon Age of the Guard when that character when that character reveal trailer came out a couple months back. And everyone, like, ranted about, um, oh, these characters, what's this 
yeah, these are woke characters. Meh, 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 meh. This is a horrible reveal. This is the... I remember I watched, like... And it was unfortunate, because I did not expect them to say this, but, like, I watched the guys from, um... Um... God, why am I blanking on the name of the podcast? It's the podcast Co-Carnage does. With... It's JP and... And I'm... Uh, sh uh, I'm really blanking on the name of the podcast to you. All three of those guys had negative reactions to that story reveal. Like, this isn't the Dragon Age I remember. And I was like, really, guys? Come on. I felt really disheartened to see, you know, especially Ko, because I like Ko. I uh, usually agree with Ko on pretty much everything. And I really find inspiration in what he's done to sort of build my own channel in, in certain directions like that. That's one of the big inspirations for me. That's always disappointing when they don't, you know, it is what it is. But it's like, really? Because I looked at it and saw it and said, this is fucking amazing. I can't wait to play this game. These characters all look at, look at the like the the slow motion like character reveal as they jump into the frame. It was very comic book style, and I was like, I'm on board for all of this. Like, I have loved every iteration of Dragon Age that's ever happened. I'm definitely not in the whole. I'm not in the camp of like Dragon Age Origins was the only good Dragon Age. Yeah, I'm not. I want to. Dragon Age Two sucked. Dragon Age Inquisition was, Inquisition was okay, but Dragon Age Origins, if it's not top down, I don't want to play it. Man, it's, it's come on. It's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be a fun game. The other thing is all the people who are like, it's gonna be woke. It's just the only thing woke is your imagination. It's gonna be a fun video game with a vast back pool of cool characters who are all going to have their own unique stories and motivations just like they have always done but I also you know I enjoyed Anthem I enjoyed Andromeda I don't you know yeah Andromeda had fucked up eye animations for the first couple of weeks it, it was launched you know those were bad but it was you know I liked the game the voice acting was really good I've done two and a half playthroughs of Andromeda um, I was it's when I did the Mass Effect Legendary Edition was it two years ago three years ago whenever that launched it might have been like three years ago I totally started a third Andromeda playthrough and then I got busy with other stuff and was like ah. but I do I like Bioware games yeah the moment I get people like that who start complaining about something is woke I just hide them from the channel I don't... We don't have space for that here. Alright, this looks like a long way away. This is a water place. Let's warp on in. Yeah, exactly, because Bioware never made a gay character. Correct. It's... They had Bioware's had like nudity and spicy relationships in their games for as long as I can remember playing Bioware games. Like they have always had progressive characters. Dude, the combos, Commander Wolf, like the combos you can do in Andromeda are sick. Like, and that's why when I saw the combat reveal for Mass Effect, or excuse me, when I saw the combat reveal for Dragon Age: The Veil Guard, I went, "Oh, they're moving it towards the Mass Effect style of gameplay, and that the the Anthem style of gameplay." I like that style of gameplay. Like, I really enjoyed the combat in the Anthem and the combat in um, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda because you could do combos and stuff. Like, it's really cool to like throw a guy in Mass Effect Andromeda it's really cool to have like a biotics ability where you throw them up in the air you hold them in place and then you hit them with like a fire rocket and they do a combo explosion that like blows up four other guys nearby or like be able to you know hold a group of them at the same time and then you know call down lightning or throw a grenade in their midst you know it's it's super super fluid uh, responsive that's a good word it's super responsive combat um, so Everything I've seen about the Veil Guard makes me go, oh baby, I really, really, really want to play this game. Um, and it's okay that, you know, other people don't see it that way. It, it's totally okay. I wish they didn't see it that way because I see it and I see an amazing game that's going to be a lot of fun to play. So that's kind of my lament about seeing some of the people that I really like. Dropped Frames, that's the name of the podcast that I couldn't remember earlier. The guys from Dropped Frames, they really had a negative reaction to that um, to that character reveal trailer which made me go no come on guys please don't do this you're gonna love it don't don't be mad don't be upset it's gonna be awesome um 
and then I've also seen you know people complaining about they want the Dragon Age pause based Dragon Age Origins pause based combat and it's like well they haven't done that since the first game like it's all that combat system has always evolved with the franchise um, and I like the way they've got it now where um, you've got the well I'm multi streaming I'm multi streaming Tim Tim so I have no idea when ad breaks are happening because I'm doing YouTube and Twitch at the same time so <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry if I'm talking through an ad break um, that's because I have no I, I have it all it's all automated I don't I don't do any of that manual stuff because I multi stream anyway I can't wait for Dragon Age Field Guard it's gonna be good that's a sub-zero planet vile brood Worm-ridden planet. Supercritical planet. Arctic planet. Oh, we got another one here, too. Alright. I don't see anything... I don't see a water planet. I don't see a uh, paradise planet or a grassy planet, so we're gonna move on. Still got a space station. All right, we're gonna get our exosuit upgrades here and at the anomaly, and then we're gonna jump to the next system. get my upgrade. I think we only have two more and I've maxed out these three rows and I'll start working on the inventory space. Alright. Yep. I got two more. We're going to do this one here and then we have one more after this. That will have filled the first three rows, and we can move on to inventory space. Let's grab the anomaly. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about cargo right now. I worried about cargo like the first seven or eight upgrades. And once I found out you can do modules at the same time, I'm just unlocking three rows of modules, and then I'm going to go back to the cargo expansion. 